<laughs> and we've got, uh, is it Fred? Yes. Alison, there you are, on uh, line one. Good evening, Fred. Good evening, Tommy. I've listened to your show. It's jolly good, you know, old chap. And you said that you don't need the money for doing the show. So I thought, what you could do, seeing as you care about the people in Sudan so much, is send all the money that you earn from doing the show to the people in Sudan. Well, I support several charities, as you would expect, but I'm not going to talk about it because why don't you just say what's on your mind instead of hiding behind a remark that you've had too long to think about? No, I think it's actually a yeah, very... Yeah, go on, say what's on your mind. Go on, make a, com co make a conversation out of it. Well, it's a valid point. You, um... Have you haven't made a point yet? I have. I've made a very good and intense point. That no, you, you haven't. Yes, I have. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. No, you haven't, because you don't understand yourself. Yes, I do. You see, you're jealous. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not. No, you are. Everyone knows no, you are. Everyone's, jealous, everyone's I'm not jealous the first the word that Ed came into everybody's the mind that you live when they heard you was that you're jealous. You wish not, you were me. I don't blame you. you I don't Chicken, blame no? you. I wouldn't want to be you. I wouldn't want to be you either. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Of course you do. You want to swap. You want to trade. You want to have my life. You want to be me. No, you want to see the things I think. No. You want to you, you want to smell the things I smell. You want to taste the things I taste. You want to be me. I don't blame you. Lots of people do. <laughs> Mostly men. No, you're too small, Tommy. I wouldn't want to be you. You're only about five foot four. Well, I'll tell you. No, what. I mean, I mean, for, for 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 a big man with a big mouth, you're a midget. Well, that's just a poor insult. I can't be no, bothered. No, you're a midget. You're it's not very big. A poor insult. Can't you do any better than that? Um, I think that's very good. I'll Take you, for example. You're a non-entity. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what that's that, that that's the reaction you get when you insult somebody. Well, no, no, you're a midget. It's not you. Your laugh. Fault. You reason, laughed out loud. Reason... Now, go on. I'll tell you what, mate. You make me laugh. Go on. I I I'll give you a thousand pounds if you can make me laugh like I just made you laugh. Well, thank you. I've enjoyed you, my kid. No, that's the challenge. No, no, I find... Because you can't do it. So, not only am I everything better than you, but I'm funnier than you. Mind you, we always knew that I would be funnier than you, because when did you last make somebody laugh? When did you last send your money up to the Sudan instead of blabbing your mouth off about how much you well, care about funny the people enough, in since Sudan, you asked the question... And blabbing your mouth off every weekend about how much you don't need the money, because you're so rich. When I am people, very rich. If people would probably tune into your... Um, show who are actually on the bread line. So why and, you, they, and they enjoy... So, so perhaps they think you're a bit of a big mouth. No, they enjoy, my, about, they enjoy uh, my success. Well, so why do you care about the people in Sudan? What do you do for them then? They're del I, what do you do for the people in the Sudan? Your comment to the woman earlier who I'm phoned up, the very nice sweet woman. No, what, what do you do for people in Sudan? You right. blab your mouth off, you yeah. make all the comments across the air, so, so justify, substantiate your claims, Tommy. You're very good at asking other people questions. You tell me what you do but for the people in Sudan. No, no, you shut your cake off, No, no, you shut your cake off. Well, no, you shut your cake off. When, when am I supposed to answer your question? When am I supposed to answer your question? in Sudan, everyone, but he has loads of money and he doesn't need people I'm going for a slash when you're ready for me to answer your question, Papa. You just say now. No, you care about the people in Sudan. So what are you going to do for them? What are you going to do for them then, Tommy? Well, come on, you justify yourself, Mr. Five foot three and a half, Tommy Boyd, or whatever you are, five foot six or six and three quarters. What are you doing for the people in Sudan? You can't justify it. You see, you've gone quiet, or you've cut me off. What I said was, I'd answer your question as soon as you said now. All you've got to do is say now and I'll answer your question. Millions are starving in Africa. What are you doing for them, Tommy? You said you care for people in Sudan. I said I'd answer your question as soon as you said now. You haven't answered my question. You're not paying attention. Well, let's make, this, let's make this a subject for the next hour. Tommy Boyd says he cares for the people in Sudan and he earns so much money that he doesn't need to do Southern County's radio on Saturday night. So I'm putting a question to all the audience. What's Tommy Boyd doing for the people in Sudan? You don't he suppose cares about them. anybody listens to you, do you? Well, I do. I think those are people really enjoying this. I think this is great entertainment. In fact, to be honest with you, I could probably do the show better than you. 
Well, all right, off you go then. Well, okay. Off you go then. You take a call. You get some calls. Off okay, you go. Fine. Okay. You, you get some calls. Nobody's ready to call to talk to you yet. Sorry? Nobody's emailed you and nobody's texted you. So what are you going to do? I'll leave it to you. You're well, on. You're, hey, what's your name? Just, you know my name. You just introduced me. Yeah, but your full name, you idiot. Sorry. Your full name. Pardon? People don't go on the radio as Ken or so Arthur. They go on the radio as Bob Stoughton. So what's your full name? Can you explain to me technically then how you're going to transmit the call through to my address? No. What happens is when you get a call, I will put the call through to you and you can take it if you get a call. Well, I wouldn't know how we're going to get this money of yours to the Sudan from the No, you said show. that you could present the show better no, than no, me. No, no, no. If you do that, listen to me, if you do that, <laughs> right, if you can do it for an hour, all right, I'll pay you my money. I don't and want you it. can do what you like no, with it. No, send it to the Sudan. Don't give it to me. I've got loads of money. I will send you the money and you can do what you like with it. No, I don't need the money. I, Are no, you chickening out? No, no, we'll send it to the Sudan. Are you chickening out? No, send it to Oxfam. You're on the air. I am going to go and have a fag. <laughs> <laughs> and if you get a call, we'll put it through to you. All right? Cause oh, I don't Alison... mind talking to people on the air. I'm quite happy to talk to people on the air. Yeah, but nobody's called you. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it, Tommy? Well, perhaps they're too busy sending money to the Sudan like you are, supposed to. And nobody's texted you. Well, I'm really worried about that. that and really nobody's emailed me. you. So that you really can't bothers, present that really the show. That really bothers me. I'm really upset about that, Tommy. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to l- let you carry on with your show, no, all right? No, no. You've diverted the subject away from your weak point, which is you made the statement that you care about people in the Sudan. And I just suggested that, seeing as you don't need the money from your show, that you send it to the people in Sudan. It's your show, pal. It's not your show. You're just lucky to have me on it. You're the guy who said you could do it better than me. You're the guy who said he cares about the Sudan. Away you go. You're the guy who said he cares about the Sudan. This is the um, crux of the matter. Um, That Tommy Boyd said he cares about the people in Sudan. And I listened to the show the other week, and he said that, um, you know, he doesn't need the money. So I just thought it might be a good idea. If the money he earns from the show, he sends the people in the Sudan. So I'd like to open that up to all the audience, all the loads of people who are listening in South East England about what Tommy Boyd can do with all this money he doesn't need, and he cares about people in the Sudan. So I open that up. That's my question to the floor, to everyone who's listening. I've got to go because I'm just so, so, so not as good as Tommy Boyd. No calls. Um, Oh, it's such a shame, isn't it? I'm no really text. Upset. No I'm emails. Really... Uh, you, can I ask you a question? You're, you're, you're crap. Can I, can I ask you a question? You're crap. Can I ask you a question? You're crap. Can I ask you a question? You're crap. Well, that's, that's, that's because you're, you're losing, you're insulting me. But you said when you were better When somebody starts me. insulting somebody, Tommy, You've proves... been on the air for two minutes and 43 seconds. Well, you're, lo- you're losing this argument hands you down. You said you were better than me and you could do the show. Well, I could do the show better than you. Well, you're not doing you, it but better you than me. You don't even understand the technology you're dealing with. You can't but handle it unless you, I'm well, helping you You don't even up. understand the technology you're dealing with. Gary wants to talk to you. Okay, put him through. Gary from Leeds. Hello, Gary. Hang on a second. Hold on a second. You've got to wait. You don't say, hello, Gary. You say, Gary from Leeds is online, whatever. No, I don't really want to. I'll, I'll well, that's how you do phoning, mate. Okay, so, thanks for the lesson, Tommy. Right, so you're Fred. Now you introduce Gary from Leeds. He wants to talk to you. Hello, Gary. Hello, who am I speaking to? Fred. Uh, Fred. Ken. Yeah. How are you, Gary? All right? I'm fine. How's Leeds? It's great. Yeah. Are you a Leeds supporter? Not really. Who do you support? I'm an armchair fan. Who do you support? Well, I don't really support any team. <laughs> I just love football. Do you? But if I don't go to a match, then I don't really support a team, I, I don't think. Right. What do you think? Mm. He's better than you, Fred. No, I didn't say that, Fred. He's trying to turn us against each other, so if you want to sort of succumb to that, that's up to you. But I'm, I've got absolutely nothing against you. I work in Leeds sometimes, actually. It's quite a nice place. Um, I like the Dales, and I find it very friendly up there, but Tommy, he, he wants to turn us on each other, so if you want to be sort of manipulated into doing that, then that's up to you. But. Well, the Dales aren't in Leeds. Well, I, I rang because I thought that you sounded like a fool. I mean, you asked Tommy a question, he was about, he was going to answer it, all you had to do was say now. So why didn't you want him to say now? Sorry? Why didn't you want Tommy, well, I mean, sorry, why didn't you want to say now so that Tommy could answer the question that you have been going on about why for about think, five minutes? Why do you think I didn't want to say now? I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a mind reader. Well, why do you ask why then? Because I'm not a mind reader. Well, then why ask then if you're not a mind reader? Well, how am I going to find out why you didn't um, want Tommy to answer your question? I don't know. You tell me. 
You mind just fine. How can I tell you if I can't read your mind? I've just told you I can't read your mind. Good. What do you mean, good? <laughs> what, sorry. Good. Pardon? <laughs> sorry. What do you mean, good? Well, good, fine. You know. Good, fine what? Good, fine whatever. Whatever? Yeah. Right. That was interesting, wasn't it? That was really exciting, wasn't well, it? Well, yeah, well, it, it shows really that <laughs> you can't answer any questions. Oh. You, can't, um, you can't ask a question properly. Are those thoughts, you can't are those thoughts, questions. Um, are those thoughts subjective? What do you mean? Well, you obviously don't know what subjective means, so it's pointless talking why, to you. Why is that obvious? Well, why is that obvious? Well, because you can't answer the question. Are those thoughts subjective? What? What is sub you yeah, ask you don't me? Know what, what subjective means? Ask Tommy. He'll excuse tell you. me. Excuse me. No, I've just asked you the question. Are those thoughts subjective? Yeah, and I'm going to answer your question. Right, go on. Do you want me to answer the question? Well, are those thoughts subjective? Uh, no, you asked the question first. You you asked the question before you asked me what subjective means, didn't you? Well, well I'm asking you if they're subjective. Your thoughts. Pardon? Are your thoughts subjective? My thoughts about what? About the statements you're making. What, what statements? I've made, I've made many statements. Well, you haven't answered my question if there's subjective thoughts about your statements, so if you can't even answer the question if they're subjective, why the hell are you asking me the question in the first place? Well, answer me, go on. You've you come out with a statement, so back it up, substantiate your... your well, I don't understand what you want me to back up. You're making... You're asking me questions, and I'm asking you if your questions are, sub, sub, you know, subjective questions, and you can't back them up. How can it be a subjective question? I must, I ask yeah, you. I asked you, are, your, ask are you. your questions subjective and you don't know what subjective means? So it's pointless pursuing the conversation if you don't know what I'm saying, is it? So you, you might as well go back to, you know... To, you know how stupid you, know, you, you sound. You still haven't answered my question, have you? But you, you've asked no, me you've two never questions. you've answered my question about you've subjectiveness. Asked me, you've asked me two, two questions. You've asked me a question. I, I don't even know why they're putting this on the air. It's just not even worth listening to. I mean... Because you know, I asked you. Okay, well, I, asked I asked you if, you, if your question's subjective and you don't know what subjective means. So go and get a dictionary and look it up. And when you understand what subjective means, come back and ask me. And I'll be only too happy to continue the conversation. But you don't know what subjective means. So we're wasting our time pursuing the conversation. Okay, so Good if night. I tell you what night subjective means... Right. I'm going, Listen, I'm not discussing. I you. see, you have to go. See, I'm, when you go, no, you've no, lost. No, because you're when you go, you don't you've know what, lost. You don't know. No, you don't know what's the When you go, you okay, lost. Okay, right, right, okay, so let's, let's try some more things then. Tell me about the history of Yorkshire, where you come from. Tell me what happened in Texas. Who said I come from Yorkshire? Well, your accent tells me that. But what's that got to do with anything? Well, again, tell, me about, tell me about Yorkshire. Tell me about the history. Why do I need to know the history of Yorkshire? Well, you don't seem to know a lot, really, do you? You seem to come on the phone and challenge people, but you, you, mean, don't, you don't really seem to know a lot about much, do you? I mean, you know, you're not, you're not coming out with anything intelligent, are you? I mean, you're just, just coming out with, you know, one-word questions and nothing to back them up. I can't be bothered to talk to you. I really Do you can't. want to know the history of Yorkshire? Yeah, tell me. Do you want to know the history of Yorkshire? Yeah, tell, tell me what happened in um, 1066 in Yorkshire. In September 1066, at Stamford Bridge. I mean, yeah, Stamford Bridge? Yeah. What, you want to tell me about the Battle of Hastings? No, that wasn't at uh, Stamford Bridge, that was at Battle. See, that's what I'm saying. You, you, what, you, come, on the, you come on the phone. It's, it's, like, it's like Tommy goes on the phone and he talks about the starving people in Sudan, and then he, the week before he's saying he's earning loads of money and he doesn't need it. So my point was then why doesn't he send his money that he's earning from the show on Saturday night to the people in Sudan? I think that's quite a good point. I, I, you know, I'm sorry. I mean, do you care about the people in Sudan? But you're, you're, Hang on a minute. But let's get to the point. You're, you're not substantiating your point, my old son. What point? You're just stuck in the question now. You're not substantiating your claims. All you do is come on here and make a load of... Substantiating what point? I haven't made the point. Do you think your comments are trite? Oh, the only you're... point I've made do you is think about... Your comments are the, only point, the, the only point that I have made... I don't think this is on the air, and I hope it's not, because I... I think it is. The only point that I've made is about you. Is that how, how foolish you sound. Well, because, not for so because you sound. Because you don't have to solve your issues, you don't have to solve your issues, son, because you don't even know anything about the history of where you come from. You don't know what's... I don't know anything about... I don't know anything about the history of Yorkshire. Well, you said you're from Leeds. You've got a Yorkshire accent, so it's pretty obvious you're from Yorkshire. I mean, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take... I didn't, did I say I wasn't from Yorkshire? Out. Well, it's obvious you are, isn't it? I mean, you know, it doesn't take Einstein to work that out, yeah, does but, it? So, so... But, so, if I, so if, if, I, if I lived in the Sudan, do you, you think I should know uh, about the history of Sudan? Well, I mean, you know, you're, you're coming on the, on the why radio. Why do you think I need to know the history of... Uh, you're of, coming of, on the radio. Why do you think I know to, need to know the history of Yorkshire? 
Well, I, you know, I'm just saying... Then why do you think, if I did know everything about Yorkshire, you know, what would that mean? It mean you had a bit of intelligence, wouldn't it? Because you're the why one... Why would it? You're, What's you're, intelligence, you're, you're the then? one making... What's making... intelligence? Sorry? What is intelligence? Well, it's something you certainly haven't got, isn't it? <laughs> let's be fair. I, I think mean, I sound more intelligent you, than you. Oh, do you? Really? Yeah. How do you justify that, then? How uh, do I justify that? Yeah. Mm, tell me. I'm one of the wisest men on the planet. Are you? I'll have you know. Really? Yes. Okay, would you like to tell me some... Do you know, perhaps I can ask some more questions, then, if you're so wise. Well, tell you what, Fred, uh, you, you're doing a really crap job hosting this show, but why don't you link to another caller as well as Gary, because there's plenty of people who would very much appreciate... Um, some of your wisdom. For example, Tony from Crawley. Would you like to yeah, have Tony up. and Gary? Let's mm. see whether we can... Tony. Uh, so Hello? go ahead. No, Gary, you're, you're the host. Uh, Fred, you're the host. So you mm. say, Gary, stay right where you are. Let's bring in Tony from Crawley on this one. Off you go. No, I can't do that. I'm not capable. Sorry. That's what I'm going to say. Well, well say, say, that, say hello to... That's, that's out of my intellectual range. You're just so superior. I'll leave that bit to you. It's beginning to look that way. Mm. Tony, you're through to Fred. What did you want to say to Fred? Hello, uh, hello, Fred. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Um, Gary, you can hear me okay, okay, can you? Yeah, yeah, sure. How are you doing, all right? You having a good night? Um, this isn't working. I can only hear him via the radio. You can only hear what, sorry? Tommy? Alison? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I can, um... Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, we were trying something different. Yes, I know, Alison, explain up. that. All right, then, okay, listen, Tony, I'll tell you what, um, if you put the phone down, Alison will phone you back. And, Gary, can I say thank you very much indeed for your call? Okay. All right, I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed it as well. It was great, great fun. Okay. Thanks for that. I'll talk to you again sometime. All right, then, bye. Fred, you stay right where you are. And do a bit... Of, are you there, Fred? Mm. Yeah, do a bit of padding then, because we've got to get Tony up on a different line for you. Well, it's not very good, Tommy. I thought you said you could run the show well. Pad, man. Pad. I, I, thought, I thought you said, you, you, you know... You, Remind you us could, of what's going on. You could, you could, position, you could run the show. No, re, I mean, I, was, I thought you were running it. I mean, I'm, I'm just a side show. I thought you were sort of, you know... Pad, mate. Doing You're not it. there yet. You know. Pad. 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 That. <laughs> Remind people what's going on. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm just an amateur. You're being paid. I mean, I'm doing this free. I mean, are you going to send me a sort of cut of tonight's money? That's what I said I'd do if you were any good. Well, why you keep me on, then? Because you said that you were better than me. Well, that's not hard, is it? Well, carry on, then. Well, Pad, you're all right. You've got, we've got Tony on another line now, so you could introduce your next caller, Fred, who's Tony from Crawley. Hello. That's no, I'll, I'll leave that to Tommy because he's sort of better at me than this, you know. Yeah, so anyway, Tony, you're through to Fred. Hello. Hello. Yeah, he can hear you, Tony. <laughs> Just looking at a film about the starving people in, uh... Sudan, and uh, it reminds me of a radio show I saw, so, um, sort of uh, listened to, and um, the commentator said that he cared about the people in Sudan, and he said that he didn't need to do the show, he had so much money. Just thinking about who that reminded me of. Can't think. Are you there, Tony? Let me think. Are You're you not doing very well, Tommy, are you? I thought you said you could handle the show. <clears throat> yeah, you, 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 you're in charge of the show. I'm just helping you out from time to time with the technicalities. If you were well, here... Well, I mean, but you're not doing very well. You're not getting people through. I mean, do you think you ought to get an engineer in there who knows what he's doing? Because, I mean... That's what happens in radio. You have to deal with it. Yeah, but, I mean, you're not doing very well, are you? No, you're not doing very well. No, I'm doing better than you. Pad. Just tell people what's going on. We'll see whether we can get, uh, Tony back from Crawley. But at the moment, you're on your own. Oh dear, I'm so upset. Would you like a sidekick? Would you like Alison in here just to have a chat She's with her? She's got a nicer voice than you have. Was you got Alison in, yeah, by all means. By all means. Well, hold on, she's just getting Tony up. This is what happens to me, and you've got to fill. So, um... But I, I've got to go soon, anyway. I can't sit on here and talk to you all night. I've got other But things. you said you could do the show till 12. Well, if you want, I'll stay on. It doesn't bother me. It really doesn't bother me. I'll sit on here and talk to you all night long. If it makes you happy. But what are we going to do about starving people in Sudan, Tommy, which was your original statement? What did Gary have to say to you about that? Oh, lots of intelligent and profound and deep things. Such as? I don't know. You tell me. You're listening. What are do you, you, are you not? 
No, but what, what do you think about the starving people in Sudan? Are you going to send them any of this money you earn? Are you saying that you, you weren't on? listening to Gary? Uh, Tommy, it, you said you earn loads of money and that you don't need to do the show and you don't need the money and that you worry about the people in Sudan. I'll send you so a thousand what? pounds. You can do what you like with it if you tell me what Gary had to say to you. No, you won't send me a thousand pound at all. What did Gary have to say you to you? You won't send me a thousand pound at all. What I'll Gary's tell you what, point? I'll tell you what, Tommy, I challenge you on air to send that thousand pound to Oxfam. What did Gary... That? How about that, Tommy? I tend you to send a thousand pound of your mingy little money to Oxfam. I, I will provided you tell me what Gary had to say to you. I'm not going to explain to you what Gary said to me. You I'm can't listen, can you? What do you mean I can't listen? I'm listening to you. You don't have any listening skills. That's not true. You don't have any listening That's skills. That's not true. I'm sorry. What did Gary say to you? I don't want to tell you what Gary said to me. You can't. I want to know why you. I, I want to know why you won't send a thousand pound to Oxfam. You didn't pick up a word he said, did why you? Why won't you send a thousand pound to Oxfam, Tommy? You talked to him for Why won't you send a thousand pound to Oxfam, Tommy? <coughs> Tommy, why with all your money that you boast about with your great big mega mouth about how much money you've got, don't you send some money to the Sudan because you said you care about We've it? We've got another caller. It's Paul from Eastbourne. Do you want to introduce him or shall I? No, you do. Paul from Eastbourne would like to speak to Fred. Go ahead, Paul. Hello, Fred. Hello, mate. How are you? Yeah. Do you, do you remember what Gary said? Sorry? Do you remember what Gary said? Do you remember what he said? Yeah, I did. Repeat after me. He said, now. Sorry? He said, now. Repeat after me. He said, now. No, nah, sorry. Can't do nah. Yeah. Do you, what, you know, what, what kind of person makes a radio presenter? You tell me. No, I'm asking you the question. You tell me. No, I'm asking you the question. No, nah, sorry, mate. Can't tell you. You, you can't do it, can you? Nah. No, I'm not as, not as bright as you, obviously. No, 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 no. Well, you know, it's about, you know, personality, it's about charisma. Is it? And mate, yeah, I'll tell you something, uh, Fred. Mm. You ain't got it, mate. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right, well, there we are. Well, look, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, obviously haven't got what you've got, and... I'm, I'm so terribly sorry about that, but, um, are you going to send some money to Oxfam then, mate, instead of spouting yeah. your mouth off? Well, I actually said it's children in need, but... Oh, do uh, you know what? How much you send to them then? Eh? How much you send well, to them? Well, me personally, I've done um, about a thousand pounds, but my corporation's done about two point two. Oh, well, million. that's wonderful, aren't you good? Well, let's just, can we have a round of applause for this chap here, because he's such a nice fellow? Ready? One, two, three. Everyone clap hands. Right, ready? There we are. Aren't you a good chap? I just, it's just so wonderful you're so good. Yeah, Mr. Thank Boyd. You, thank you very much for being such a, such a great guy. You Mr. know, Boyd, well we done. to get this loser off the old radio air because he's a complete tosser. So uh, I, I know he is, but... I'm over to you, matey. I know he is. Good night. All right, thanks, Paul. But it's, it's funny that you're letting all certain types of people through who just agree with you, Tommy, isn't it? And all the other people who don't agree with you, how you don't let them through. That's very, very clever, isn't it? I'm, I've got no control over that. Oh, no, you don't know you, don't know you haven't. You're too much of a flipping wimp to let anyone through who disagree with you. You didn't want to say flipping That just about sums you up, Tommy. You're a great presenter. I love your show. You're a lovely guy. I, I love it, and I'm going to keep listening to it because it's great entertainment. Love you, but I just wish you'd back up if you say you care about people in the Sudan. That was my point. Good evening. He, kind of took, he was on. He did seventeen minutes, which is not bad. Not bad. Well, it was bad, but I mean, seventeen minutes is is not bad. He had an interesting conversational tick, which I've come across before. It's unusual. It's reasonably rare, but I have come across it before, which is where you ask a question, and then because you're so worried that you might not be able to deal with the answer, you carry on asking the question. In, in a variant form, or, or, or else exactly as you asked the question before. The implication being that the question isn't being answered. The question can't be answered because there aren't the listening skills there that a person who wants to answer a question can identify with so that, so that he can actually gauge the way in which he answers the question so that it's suitable to the questioner. But that was a hoot. Well, not a hoot. Um, it's quite interesting. I'm sort of waiting for Alison to finish up her business because we've got a very um, irate switchboard at the moment, which I love. I absolutely love. Hello. I've said, that's, this is Steve in Bexhill. Hello, Steve. Hello. Hello. Um, just, just letting you know about that pillock that was just on, basically. Yeah, he was a bit. I'll <laughs> tell you, it was unbelievable. <laughs> He's got more front than Bexhill Seafront, I swear. Well, yeah. Bexhill Seafront isn't huge. We usually, we used to say bright or Brighton, but anyway, carry yeah, on. Yeah, no, yeah. He's, he was unbelievable, though. I mean, it was a laugh, wasn't it? It was, well, it was a laugh, I really. Know. He, he was just talking as if he knew, it knew uh, to, how to run everything. It was astonishing, really. 
it was astonishing. It was, I mean... I better just quickly position the show, because be, people would have tuned in for whatever reason. There's a lot of people, for example, at the moment, going out to collect their children from parties. Yeah. And they're listening in the cars. I know there's a big swathe of that, and lots of professional drivers for a bunch of reasons as well. Hello, minicabs everywhere. Um, you're doing a great job, and I know you're getting really busy at the moment. Um, and people in kitchens and bedrooms. It's BBC Southern Counties Radio. It's the late Saturday night show. I'm Tommy Boyd. Alison Ferns, we've been deprived of her company for 20 minutes or so because the switchboard's gone a bit bananas, which is great. With people who've got lots of passion and want to um, sound off. Um, and what we had on was a chap who heard me make a remark about the Sudan. And he seems to have heard me say that I am so rich I never need to work again. So why don't I send the money I earn from doing this show to the Sudan? <coughs> But it became apparent, I think you'll bear me out on this, Steve. That's right. He, he didn't want to hear the answer. Well, this is it. It uh, made me wonder if he sends money himself. Did he ever say that? Well, he, the listening skills were such that you couldn't ask a question and um, get an answer which related to the question that you asked. That's right. And he, he sounded very patronising to, to people as well. Well, I mean, have you phoned phone-in programmes much yourself? Um, I, I phoned in a couple of times to this, this station. Okay. And, uh, I mean, you, you don't get the, the remarks that you were getting from him, that's for sure. No. And, uh, and I mean, you, you're not being patronised either. I mean, you were giving an answer and he, he was jumping to a different one. And yes, it was a very... you were about five questions and you were answering the first one before you could answer the last one. Yes, as I understand the condition, it was literally something of a schizophrenic conversation. Yeah. In that there'd been a kind of a, a, a schism existed so that one question was not being responded to with an answer. And That's right. a point was not being digested and responded to at all. Um, sure. So you had a non-conversation group. It was almost like something that Harold Pinter would have written if anybody knows who he is. I don't myself. But anyway. Sure. Um, yeah. So, uh, however, when you phone a phone-in programme, it is slightly nerve-wracking, isn't it? Sort of waiting, sure. waiting to go on and that sort of thing. So I usually give people a couple of minutes just to settle down and settle into it to get the best out of them. Yeah. And, um, uh, which is why you and I are chatting like a couple of mates. Well, that's right. And the other thing is, I mean, you, you can't take things seriously that one another say anyway. I mean, no. you, you go on, I mean, it's like these people on these comedian shows. I mean, if you don't, you know the person, so like Jim Davidson, where you see him on, on um, Big Break, and then you go up to a stand-up comedian, you're not going to expect the same thing there as what you do on Big Break. And he's going to use offensive... Uh, language and the same with, with um, yes. just presenting. I mean, you're going to say something that's going to slip out and, yes. and he obviously doesn't realise that himself. No, it, it was, it, but nevertheless, you know, it was, uh, it, it, it was interesting, wasn't it? Well, that's right. I would have uh, liked to have um, spoke to him personally. Anyway. You would. You fancied a fight there, didn't you? Well, he, he's, uh, he was starting to get on my nerves a bit. He was getting so on my nerves. I nearly said tits then. He was <laughs> getting on my nerves. Uh, Don't say that one for no. good sake. Oh, back think, on the line. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> what's new? Steve, great to talk to you. Okay, dear. I really appreciate your call. Andrew, cheers, Thank mate. Bye-bye. Bye. What a nice guy. What a lovely guy. A um, couple of emails that have come in. Please keep this... Can I say ask? I think so. On. I'll phone soon. This is from someone called Austin. Very nice. Uh, Martin from Godalming. What a stupid man, Fred. He's getting off the phone. He's talking utter dross. Robert Fletcher has said, I'm going to take out a contract on this idiot. It will be money well spent. This is, this is pub talk. It's okay. Don't mean it. Um, 